All right, so we finished with our modeling, right? So in this lesson, we will start with the final, you know, shading, lighting and rendering in LOPS. So I'm going to break up this lesson into two parts. In this one, we'll do the basic importing to LOPS and instancing and just the basic material assignment. And in the next lesson, we'll add the lights and do a little bit of uh, shader randomization via uh, instancing. So just to get started, uh, I noticed a few issues with my cake, which I just want to repair. So firstly, we don't have a group for uh, the toppings. Okay, like if you click here, you'll notice that there's no group for toppings. And we also have an additional group here called base. So I just want to get rid of that. Okay, so I'm going to take, uh, take another group delete. And I'm going to get rid of base for all three. Yeah, and then we also have a name attribute in here, which will also cause problems. So take an attribute delete and delete the name attribute. VDB ends up creating name attributes. Like after you convert it back, it ends up generating like a name attribute. Okay, so this is fine. And now the last thing, uh, which will sort of kick in a recalculation is I want to take a group and we want to call it topping. Okay, and if you've done everything right, let's give it a few seconds to recalculate. Yeah, so we should have everything in place. So we have cake, icing, paper, sprinkles and topping. And if you want to check this, we can probably check this. So let's take a blast and we'll do delete non-selected. And let's start with cake. So we have the cake and then we want the icing. Okay, and we have the paper and we want sprinkles and then finally we want topping okay so everything is in place this is perfect okay so now let's get started so let's come into the lop network so we'll create a lop network and jump in and let's also split this viewport top and bottom and i'll change this to scene graph okay and then start off with the basic uh, SOP import. So take a SOP import and load as reference. Call this uh, cake A. So that will be like because this is default, it's kept to slash dollar OS for the primitive path. That is the uh, folder it will generate or that's the directory structure it will start generating. Let's pick up cake A. See, so we get this. So we have like cake A and mesh zero. And then uh, I want to import all the subset groups so I can assign material. So we'll switch on subset groups and this is everything we want. So just uh, type in star and that's it. So we should have all of our subset groups. Then just alt drag and duplicate this. We'll call this cake B and cake C and change this to cake B and cake C. Okay, and then if we merge them together, yeah, we have all of our cakes. If you don't want to see the selection, you can turn this off, like display selection. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is we want to assign materials. So take a material library and we will create uh, five materials. Okay, so just come in here. I can take a principal shader. So let's just call it uh, cake material and by default it'll, it'll use the point color which is basically what we want and then all drag we'll call it uh, yeah we'll call it icing material and then this is paper material. topping material. Okay, so this is fine. So just come in here and say autofill. So it will fill up all the materials and you'll be able to see them. And then let's take assign. So take an assign material and we'll have to do this, you know, slightly differently. 
uh, if you've seen the LOPS intro video, this should all be the same for you. So you should know, you know, what exactly you're doing. But what we want to do technically is that uh, the group names are the same. The geometry name is different. So the way it works is like this is where you put in your group or your geometry and this is the material. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the cake. But since I wanted to assign on all the cake pieces or everything called cake, I'll change the A to a star. So which is why it, it's convenient to name it cake ABC so that it's easier to assign the material. And then you pick up cake material. Okay, so let me just, you know, make this bigger. So I on one, yeah, so let's do three and then we'll do, you know, four and five. So again, take the icing and then take the paper and we do the same thing. So icing material and paper material and just replace the A with a star. Yeah, and then two more. Okay, so we want sprinkles and we want topping and the same thing, sprinkles and topping. And so this is again going to be like star and star. Okay. So if you've done everything right, you shouldn't see anything. You'll just see the material like that. Okay. So if we come in here and we can make a few changes. So get all of this to full white. So the colors, you know, are brighter. And I don't want, I want this to be more rough. So we'll increase the roughness of the cupcake and the paper, I'll keep it to medium gray. But again, like, you know, increased roughness. The sprinkles can be shiny. And the topping is fine. And default, since it's a Houdini material, like a, a mantra or a karma material, it will automatically import point colors. So you don't need to do anything. Now let's do some basic instancing. So what I can do is I can just bring in the points that I want. But I want to create a collection out of this. Okay, so take a stage manager. And you'll see, you know, all your objects. So I want to create a collection of the cakes. So I'm going to click here and call it cakes. And then just take all three cakes and drag and drop them in here. So this is a nice way, like if you've imported 10 objects and you only want four of them for instancing, then this is a nice way to do it. So take a, and then take a collection. So the collection specifies like, okay, like all the stuff in this folder is a collection and use that collection for instancing. So give the name, so the collection is cakes. And then where is it? So it is in cakes slash, and you should see cake ABC will make it star. So everything inside the cakes folder. Okay, so that gives me, you know, all of this. Now let's take an instance to points. And if you've done everything right, okay, it should work. So we're going to turn off uh, use entire stage. And here we put in percentage sign uh, cakes, which is the name, whatever is the name of your collection, you put in percentage sign cakes. And if I plug this in to the second input, now the instance to points has like an add node in there. So you have like one point. So if we do this right, you should see one cake showing up. And then as I change the seed, you'll see it change. Okay, so if I keep it to index, you'll see it go one, two and three. And so if I just come in here and if I take a line, right, and I say uh, in the x axis and three points, and I'll take a wrangle and the attribute is called index. So we can change, change this to index attribute. And if I come in here and I say I at index is equal to let's say two. So what will happen is you'll see, see it changed to two. Like let me lock that. If I change this to zero, so you'll see it change. So what I can do is I can just say at pt num and you'll get, you know, cake one, two, three. So this is fine. Like this is how your instancing basically works. 
So what I can do instead is I can take an object merge in here and I can pick up the uh, from the cupcake box I can pick up the cake points. So you should see this. So now what I'm going to do here is I'll just unlock this and I want to make groups of this. Okay, so we'll take a group here and then I can come to points and I can select this, press enter. Yeah, so you've selected these groups, we'll call it A and then uh, let's try this again. I think the viewport is, yeah, okay, so just you know, duplicate this, we'll call this uh, B, I'll select the middle points, okay, and, you know, drag and drop, yeah, select, this will be C, and again, just select these, okay, so we have our three groups, and then we can just take this attribute wrangle, and we can specify A, B, C for them. Okay, so I can just come in here. Yeah, see, so we have all of this. So I can just come into attribute wrangle. It's at PT num, so it's only one, two, three, and then it doesn't know what to do. So instead what we do is let's say this is zero, and this is for group A, and then, uh, you know, drag and drop. This is one, see this is for group B. So see, you're starting to change, and then, this is uh, group C and this is two. See, so we have like, you know, the Ferrero and then this, and then finally these guys. Uh, the problem that's happening is that every time I press enter here, it tends to jump up to like the object level. But uh, yeah, the basic stuff is, so what we've done is we've created three groups, one for each point, And then we've just assigned like an attribute wrangle and specified, you know, what those are. So if let's say I want the Ferrero in the middle, uh, let's make this one. Let's make this zero. Yeah, so the Ferrero are in the middle. And uh, yeah, let's do one final thing. So I'm going to take a SOP import and I'm going to just pick up the, the out box. Uh, let's do one thing, let's give it some normals. So let's come here, I'll give it some normals. Yeah, and then go back. So this is good. And then we can merge these together. Or you can also connect it here. Like, you know, that also forms like the base for it. If you don't want to connect it there. But I think I'll just bring it in, you know, it gets a little confusing then, like, you know, what to connect where. So we'll just merge these two together. You know, that's fine as well. Okay. Yeah, and then let's just take a transform. I think these are going in slightly, so I just want to move them up a little bit. Yeah, and let me let me again take a material library for this guy. Let's call this uh, cake box, and I'll put a material library here for the cake box. I'll assign a material. So, principal shader. Let's call it box and assign material. Yeah, just fill this, so autofill, and then come in here. This is cake box and the material. Yeah, there we go. And let's just come in here. Want it really rough and bright enough. Make it slightly yellowish, yeah. Okay, and then uh, let's do one last thing. I'm going to create a grid and just plug it in. So we just have a grid in here, but I want it really big. So yeah. And then just before we close it, let's assign, uh, let's add a light and do a render. So I'll take a dome light. So we'll plug it in and I'm going to pick up a texture. So I'll pick up uh, the one that I've been using like if I plug in here, should be able to see it. Okay, let me just sort of spin it around a little bit. So I know where the light is coming from. If you want it to be more detailed or more smoother, what you can do is press D and this will bring you to geometry. 
uh, come into uh, the like you can increase the anti-aliasing come into lights and you can increase the sampling so we can make it like 128 so this will give you you know a smoother result or you can go higher still let's try a thousand this will probably slow down the viewport but no okay like 100 is fine it's not doing anything beyond that and then let's take a karma uh, node and let's try to render this so let's just plug this in and i'm going to save this file and let's do one thing so what you can do here is if you come into rendering in the render tab you have this option here which says ipr reserve threads what that means is how many cores should it reserve uh, for the rest of the work so if you have like 32 cores and you want 16 for rendering and 16 for not so you can just type in 16 over here so let's i have 16 cores so 32 threads so i can say give me 10 threads you know safe so 10 threads are for working and it's using the other 22 for rendering okay so if i've done everything right i should get a render so i can just hit karma and we should get to see something yeah so there you go okay so i can just take this guy here let's try to rotate this around yeah i think this is good so i can turn off the light and just sort of bring this in yeah you can also enable color temperature and try to make it a little warmer like i can enable color temperature and make it you know yeah i think this is nice all right so that's basically it so this is our you know this is our basic cupcake box so in the next lesson which will be the final lesson of the series uh, we'll just do a little bit of randomization okay so what i want to do is i just want to do a little bit of like random rotation on the cakes and then also randomize maybe the color of the paper okay so we'll do those two things in the final lesson